Okay, we are now recording. All right, hi folks. Uh, so we're here for the first um, ECAC meeting post election, <laughs> post national election. Um, we are still the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee, and we're still planning on helping guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Um, those goals and the plans for getting there were adopted, are adopted from the CARP, the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, which was accepted by the town council back in 2021. It took 2016 as a base year and calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025. 50% by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2050. Um, so this committee has two primary functions. One, to advise the town council and recommend or propose policies or actions that will help us meet the climate goals. And two, to promote a just, equitable and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement. Um, so with that, first thing we need to do today is uh, get a note taker. So looking at minutes from last time, which I have here. Um, it looks like last time Andrew took notes for us. Um, Steve? So, so it's vacant's turn. Huh? It's vacant's, vacant's turn, turn. Right? in the last row. Well, if vacant's not here, <laughs> maybe we should go to Steve. Um, OK, unless anybody else wants to. Yeah, unless anyone else wants to do it. I haven't taken notes yet. I can take notes. Ah. All right. Thank you, Caitlin. We have to remember not to do Andrew next next time. The the names always seem to be in random order, but I always try to keep on the list. <laughs> Somehow Steve keeps ending up as the next yeah. note taker. Right? I know. Who keeps putting Steve's me? He's always a note taker. <laughs> I think Stephanie likes your notes, Steve. <laughs> All right. So um, I can share the minutes. We have our note note taker. So the first thing is always minutes, right? Then we do public comment, if I remember right. Yes. Um, all right, hang on a minute. Am I sharing the right thing? Can you guys see the minutes? Yeah, we see two screens, a Zoom screen on the left, and your minutes are kind of small okay, on the right Something's side. funny then, hang on a minute. Let me try that again, share. ECAC minutes, share. Now it should be right. Yes. Good, okay. That's better. Um, all right. Make them bigger? Yes, that's what I'm trying to do there right you. now. Thank you. A minute. Um, here's the view. Zoom. Page width. No. <laughs> because I put comments in. I know why it's doing that. Hang on a minute. Um, let's just make it bigger. Zoom. Let's make it 150. I'll open this up. And then they should be, hold on, whoops. There we go. All right, there we go. Good, good enough. I had a couple of things. Um, I'll just go through them slowly, but there were just two things I wanted to clarify or, or change. Um, I have not, I don't think I remembered to share that letter of support yet. I got, I don't know about everybody else, but I've been feeling a little uh, <laughs> disoriented by the events at the national level these last couple of weeks. And I just sort of uh, couldn't really think straight to do anything for about two weeks. So I still have to send in that letter. I, I have it from last time. Solar bylaw review. Um, this note here about Goldner Share that there are plans to install traffic circles. Martha had brought that up at the beginning. I brought it up under advisory and support just to have a little bit more discussion around it. And I wanted to be careful because I didn't want to make it sound like this sounded like I was um, brings up it says brings up hesitancy around traffic circles when traffic stops let pedestrian traffic through traffic through. I was a little, I figured that's, those are details that could be left out and I wasn't sure that represented quite what I, it might be, it might be read as misrepresenting what I said. So I thought just take those sentences out and replace them with something like, um, 
Goldner initiated discussion of traffic circles in front of the new Fort River School and just leave it out at that. And then I will reach out to TAC, um, which I haven't done yet. Unless, Tony, you'd like to do it. <laughs> I, don't know. I haven't heard back from yeah. anyone in TAC, but I have reached out. Um, oh, oh, you did reach out about that? The last time you brought it up, I did, yes. Okay. All right. All right. So that was that was the last meeting. I think you were you were at the last meeting, right? It was a month a month ago. I mean, yeah. Last meeting there was no meeting. <laughs> yeah. All right. So and then there was one other thing here. I wasn't sure this word too was correct. The uh, if it would be used to purchase an electric truck for the facilities department, which moves them towards all electric vehicles right it doesn't mean they're going to be all that it's all electric now it does it they only have two vehicles so yes they are all electric because oh, be okay big. then leave that <laughs> i i i delete this comment and the associated um the highlighting i'll take that out later but at any rate um i can't move this there all right so then leave that so it is all electric now. That's pretty cool. So I sent this to you already. Stephanie, just ignore the second comment. Any other comments or suggestions? not and if those changes are okay then someone should make a move to accept the minutes lori can you stop sharing the screen yes thank you i can move to accept the minutes second sorry I'm, who was the second i thank second you. thank you okay and in no particular order roof yes mckellarath Yes. Davis? Uh, yes. Ising? Yes. Allison? Stain. Goldner? Yes. Drucker? Yes. And it's approved as amended. OK, so it doesn't look like we have any um, public. Is that still the case? If that's still the case, then no public comment. Uh, next thing on the agenda is waste-related topics. I don't think I have anything else to share on that, except that I still haven't sent the letter that I think we finalized last time, right? I think I have it here, so I won't even bring that up again. I'm pretty sure I have the draft we worked on last time. It was just a short, simple, sweet letter that is going to get sent in support of the pay-as-you-throw um, RF the RFP for a um, town-wide waste hauler. Is there anything else on waste related topics that we should touch on? There's a recycling initiative in there. Anyone know what that was about? I don't remember that. I think that was just the uh, black plastics maybe? Yeah, which doesn't seem to be anything we can do anything about. Do you wanna take it off then for the next meeting? Yeah, I think so. I don't know that there's much to be done there. So next thing on the agenda then is the solar bylaw review response. Where are we with that, Steve? I have not been to a CRC meeting. I, I'm not sure if there has been ones in the last couple of weeks. I think the schedule was, there were some non-meetings on their two week cycle. Do you know, Stephanie, if they've met yes. CRC? Yes, we did have a meeting on the 12th. Um, oh, I missed that, okay. Well, because what had happened, there was a change in the um, agenda 
So they were supposed to do the zoning, U drive zoning overlay. And then they ended up switching that to the 19th, which was, um, I think that was, oh, actually, I'm sorry. I think the 26th, I don't know. The schedule got kind of messed up. And then yeah. we did have a meeting. Um, they just continued their review. Um, honestly, can I just give some feedback for this particular agenda item that I really feel like it's going to be a while before you have a draft that you can actually comment on. Um, I think it it's still, even after they finish going through the draft that they currently have, they're still going to have to go back and revisit certain things that they haven't worked out yet. So I just think it's going to be a while. So, you know, I mean, I don't think you'll have anything to respond to and review for some time. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Um, my preference would be to provide input when the plan is still somewhat uh, malleable, still under review and being changed, as opposed to, you know, later on, it's just a little bit harder to change things if they are getting closer to being done. So I will try to continue monitoring what's been going been going on with the CRC and um, report back in future meetings to us, to ECAC, where things are. And if I see anything that I think ECAC could could provide advice on at, the, at, at this stage or at the upcoming stages. Do you happen to know, Stephanie, when the next CRC meeting that will be reviewing the solar bylaw? I think it's on the 26th. 26th, okay, so next next week. Next week. Oh, oh yeah, I do have one sitting there on my calendar for next week. Yes. Yeah. So I had one for last night, but it, that there wasn't one last night. There wasn't. So last night was the one they skipped. So they okay. had one on the, they moved it up and they had one on the 12th. They skipped the one that was supposed to be last night because there was supposed to be one last night. Okay. And then they, um, yeah, and then they scheduled the next one for November 26th. And I think the University Drive Overlay District agenda item is going to be December 3rd. Okay. Yeah, the other thing is that one of the things that's happened since the last meeting, which you said was on the 12th, I think, is that we now have a climate bill that actually passed. And large sections of that are devoted to issues around solar siting, for example. So I don't know the details, but um, I was going to bring that up later in the member updates or in the regional stuff. Um, so. Yeah, I had the same thought to, to bring that up. And I don't know when, Laura, you want to have that discussed. Um, um, well, we can talk about that piece of it now if you have information about it. Um, <laughs> just wait till later and talk about it in general. I, I don't, but I'm going to give myself the homework assignment to try to learn more about it, particularly in regards to solar siting and how the state law might support or conflict with the trend that Amherst is developing in the solar bylaw. Do you want to put this on as an agenda item for, I mean, I know that you have the solar bylaw review, but this seems more specific to the climate bill. Yes. Yeah, that could be an agenda item, a review of the climate bill and its implications for local energy. For next time. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully I can get to it for next time. Okay. Well, I'll put it in and <laughs> you do what you can. We'll try. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that they're um, separate from this bill. The state is also updating the SMART program, which is the solar incentives for um, solar PV installations, mostly rooftop, I believe, but I think it's all different sizes. And I don't know the status of that either. Um, I... If if too bad we don't have Dwayne still, he would be the one that would would know. But oh, but he's happily ignoring all of that now. And <laughs> <laughs> probably, um, I don't know if I'll get to doing both of those, but I'll, I'll at least try to look into the state law that passed that the governor signed just a couple of days ago, I think, um, and see what I can find for implications for Amherst on that. I'm not even sure who's at the Clean Energy Extension now who would know answers to that. There was um, River Strong, was that the name? Yep. There's one person there, um, but I don't know who else is still there or might know. Oh, okay. 
right. but that would be someone to ask too. They would be keeping track of that, I would think. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow, I think Zara might still be there. Okay, I hope so. I can always write an email to Dwayne and just say, hey, do you know of any sources that summarize the state bill? And uh, you know, he might have some information. That, or there was a, I got sent a, um, there is a summary out of Senator Brown's, what's his name? Oh. Uh, Senator Brownsberger office put a summary out that uh what well, didn't go into specifics though you know it was it was pretty long summary but it wasn't nearly specific enough i think it might require actually digging into the bill I i'll, I'll send a link for that to everyone later yeah if you could do that and if anybody else sees even news stories that summarize the bill if um if you could share those i think that would be helpful um i did try to go through and read the bill this was back i think just before it got passed in the Senate, the first chamber. And boy, these things are not hard to, they're not easy to read because it's basically such and such section of the law will be replaced by this paragraph and this word will be substituted. So you're, you're getting bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, but I wondered, um, does anybody know with, when a bill like this passes, is there like a, a legal red line version that, that shows the bill with the old stuff crossed out and the new stuff? highlighted is that available typically publicly i i i can tell you that there are annotated laws um of massachusetts just like there's annotated laws of the federal government how quickly this gets into the annotated laws um steve i don't know okay but, but i'm also very very interested in that climate bill so i'll try to read it um um, and I've read a lot of bills, so maybe I'll be able to make a little bit more sense out of it. Okay. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. And if you do see a source, then yes, share the link because um, I'd like to, to try to take a look at it. Yeah. I, the, 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 the treatise, the volumes would be mass general laws annotated. Oh, okay. Um, but how how uh, how soon it gets in there again, I, I just don't know. I mean, it's, okay. only, it's only a week old. So, right. Yeah. Can I put you okay. both down then for that particular item? Yes. Yep. Cool. Yeah, do it alphabetically by last name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pull the bill and read the bill. I promise. <laughs> you can do a reading at our next meeting, Don. <laughs> and I'll, um, I, I'm just messaging a few people from work right now that focus on Massachusetts, and I'll see if they recommend any good summaries. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. All right, onward. Education and outreach. We start with uh, Pace, Don, anything new? No, I have nothing new. Anything new on that uh, front? I know that um, LEA had, a, I think they might have had a meeting this week. I missed it. it. Maybe it's next week. I've forgotten now. Where they're going to be, this was actually not unrelated, I think, to Pace. Hang on a minute. Let me just find this announcement. I don't know if this is case or not. I probably got I, it. I managed to miss it yesterday. Dang. But they were going to have someone named Bill Wallendorf, real estate project manager at Valley CDC on rehabilitating the former Northampton nursing home into 60 all affordable apartments, which sure sounds like a PACE project to me. Yeah, it sure does. And um, but I don't know. I missed it. I'm sorry. Um, but I can touch base. Yeah. Um, might be interesting to know what the heck they're doing there. Yeah. It, remind me, is that Darcy's group? That's Darcy's group. Yeah. yeah she, I know I've got the email. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll, I'll run that down. The renovation of what's the building in Northampton? Uh, hang on. I just had it up. It's the renovation of, I can forward this to you. Uh, it's an email. Well, you got it. It's an email. I got it. I'm uh, sure I got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, um, blah, 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 blah. Building time. Where'd it go? Um, uh, rebuilding the former Northampton nursing home into 60 all affordable apartments. And the name is Bill Wommeldorf, W-O-M-E-L-D-O-R-F. Wommeldorf. Okay. Yeah. So that was the... Um, it, it, it must be something about like that, the finance for it, because... Normally, something like a a forty B 
affordable yeah. project wouldn't necessarily in and of itself be something that Darcy's group would be interested in. So yeah, they um well Darcy tries to they try to tap into a lot of different things in the area and um help move them along. Um at any rate. Uh okay, so then there's all right. So we, if we're done with that, then there's coordination with local groups. Tony, um, Tony? Not really an announcement. It's a proposal. Um, I've spoken with the administrative staff of Elevate on um, at UMass um, about doing some kind of a workshop, like a single day workshop slash joint event in the spring. I've actually also received funding from OIE on campus um, for about $800 to put towards the um, functioning of this event. Um, so whether we do it today or in the coming weeks, it'd be nice to be able to kind of figure out what your schedules look like and also kind of topics for um, what we could exchange at the event. The event structure as required by the funding source um, necessitates both like a workshop and a keynote. So also the topic that we decide on will go towards helping me figure out um, alongside Elevate the keynote to come and kind of lead the workshop and the event itself. That sounds fun. <laughs> um, there are a couple other things going on on campus that I think people ought to know about. Um, I'm, this is probably the right place to mention them. Um, if there's nothing else, Tony? No. Nope. Um, no, I don't know. And I'll mention these two things. Um, Bill McKibben is coming to campus to give the Ellsberg Lecture in the Old Chapel next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. That should be interesting. I don't know if you guys know who Bill McKibben is. He's fantastic. Um, he spoke last year, too, and he gave a very convincing and um inspiring speech. I highly recommend everyone attend. He's also well embedded in the social side of um, climate action movements, and it's a good way to kind of see what's going on in that sphere. Yeah, this, call, his, this uh, talk is called Back, uh, Back to the Wall, Face to the Sun, Where We Stand in the Climate Fight or something like that. Hmm. Um, and also there's uh, Professor Ramtin Siyoshansi's talk on decarbonizing electricity systems, which is being given uh, this Thursday, tomorrow, from noon to one in the Gunnis Center in the engineering quad at UMass. And I think everybody's invited to that as well. Um, those talks often have pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if they're going to do that tomorrow or not, but it is a lunchtime talk, so it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I was going to try to go to that one. I'm going to try to go to both of them. So there's a lot of stuff on campus that that touches on what ECAC does. Uh, Do you know if either of those will be recorded? I don't know. I, I'm guessing that Bill McKibben's will be because it's an Ellsberg lecture. It's a big deal. I'm not sure about the one on decarbonizing electricity systems. Um, I can send links again. I, I can send links around to the group afterwards, um, or uh, I can put this in a page to make part of a packet or something. But um, it's easy enough to Google them too. Just be careful when you Google McKibben that you're not looking at last year's talk. <laughs> There's often no year on the web page, and you have to figure out that it was last year's talk. All right, so other than that, back to heat pumps. Um, I'm more interested in hearing where the heat pump program is than anything else. I've had a whole bunch of interesting things happen with neighbors again coming to me and asking about the Amherst program and asking generally about heat pumps. Um, it's nice to see my neighbors making changes. The person who got the geothermal system, that whole thing is coming online about now. Um, so that's, it. it's, it's exciting to see. So maybe I should just turn this one over to Stephanie, if you want to do your update on that now rather than later. 
Um, either or, if you want to hear about it now, I'm happy to yeah, jump I'd love in. to hear about it. What's going on with the heat pump program? Yeah, so um, I have been having regular meetings with CET. They've just been really slowly trying to develop it and flush it out so that, you know, they have a full, um, you know, well-planned, laid out program so that it's kind of efficient once it hits the ground running. Um, they should have the final draft of that planned probably by the end of uh, December, hopefully mid-December, but mid to the end of December. Um, and then the uh, next step would be to launch the pilot. So thank you, Lori, for the few folks that you've sent forward. Um, I know one person was a uh, in a condominium and I don't think I had actual contact for that person. So I forwarded it, you know, so I don't know what they're going to do with that, but Lori, if you have um, Sam's contact info, if you could get that to me, that would be great. So oh, I can forward okay. it to them. Sorry, I didn't have that. Um, That's okay. I, I hadn't reached out to you yet because I think they're still, they're not ready to contact him anyway. But if you can get that to me, that would be great. Yeah, and I have a couple more neighbors who might be interested too, who I haven't had time to follow up with. One of them wanted to ask me some questions first, and I just, I've been overwhelmed the last couple of weeks. Yep. Um, I don't know how many they'll do. So I think if you yeah. send them to me, they'll probably, it would be nice for them to actually have some options of who to start with. Okay. Um, but they're going to be, so they'll be launching in the first quarter of 2025. So and that's the first uh, pilots will get done. Right. So the, it'll launch with the pilots in the first quarter of 2025. And also um, the, and I've announced this before, but the mass save updates uh, will be also announced in February. So that'll have relevance to the work that they're doing as well. So, and it will have an impact on our program. So hopefully in a good way. Um, good. So the, that's what's this. So the status with them is that it's just, it's, it's, it is moving. They are working on it. Um, it's not that they haven't been doing anything at all. They are, um, okay. it's just going to take some time and, um, and you know, part of it is also because of the changes with Mass Save, it's going to have implications for this work. And well. you're still looking for more, um, for more pi potential pilot folks. So if any, if anybody knows anyone who wants to, you know, serve as a pilot in this, um, send the name to Stephanie. Yes. Um, like I said, I have a. I've been sending it just around my neighborhood and um, got four responses. Um, some that didn't quite want to be forward, have their names forwarded yet, but I, I'm still working on them. <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't know how many, like I said, I don't know how many they want to start with. So, um, you know, I think two to three was a number that they had tossed out before, but just if people are interested, just send them to me and I'll let them sort of figure out who would be, um, you know, they might want to have sort of a mix of different, um, yeah. you know, heist types and systems. And so that might be good if they have options. Right. Um, Good. Um, all right. Is there any um, one neighbor wanted to know something very specific, which was they were concerned that um, they might fall in a gap where they're not low enough income to get the additional monies from Mass Save, um, but they are retired on a fixed income. And you know had to be very careful about what they did, and we're wondering if the, they'd heard there might be additional money available through the town. Is there any inkling yet of how that's going to look? Are people going to get an extra grant of so much, or an extra? You know, do they do, do folks know what to do? We know what to expect yet in the way of financial aid. For so I I think yeah. So the goal is to actually provide some financial incentive to people. That was the whole crux oh. of the program. You know, is to give funding towards you know people is, um, installing heat pumps. Um, I think the the thing that will impact this is if Mass Save is covering 100% for low income households. Um, yeah. I think we we only touched on this just a little bit and this was more hypothetical, not um, exactly how the program will work. But one of the things to con we would consider or CET would consider with the funding is if there are people in a situation similar to these folks where they don't have access to as many incentives as somebody else might, um, then they may be more inclined to give a little more towards that household. You know, I think there'll be sort of a maximum threshold, but you know, if somebody is getting a hundred percent covered, 
and the cost in the end to them is only a thousand dollars, we're not going to be giving them thirty five hundred dollars or twenty five hundred dollars, right? So you know it's going to be it's going to be apropos to each household's situation, and there'll be a maximum, and then there'll be sort of a you know a range depending on what people have access to. So, and again, this isn't, you know, it's still being developed, but this was what we discussed as a potential approach. Yeah, I get enough questions that I've personally been toying with the idea and maybe there's something ECAC wants to be involved in or not, or maybe there's some way I can do something with the CET, but I've been thinking of just holding a weekly coffee hour <laughs> on Zoom or at my house for anyone who wants to chat about, about uh, how to convert their home, um, because I do get a lot of requests now for people just just wanting to talk about it you know um, well i mean have you know down. we we did say that there would be you know that there will be uh you know some component of coaching as part of this you know and it's kind of separate from what cet is doing yeah. so i you know and i in my update i have something else that's relevant to this and i'll just wait until i give my update to elaborate further but all right. You know, just say, I think there's going to be some opportunities to do just that kind of thing. And it would be nice to get some residents who might be interested. Yep. All right. Okay, good. Um, going on from there, climate resilient schools. I don't really have anything to add there. So we can move on to advisory and support. If there's nothing else along education and outreach anyone wants to bring up. Okay, and back to the rental building efficiency bylaw. Anything new on there? Should that stay on the agenda? What are we waiting for there? The only minor thing was the group had a meeting, the ACEEE -E -E something, 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 something. Mm -hmm. This is a network of community people, many of them municipal employees, had a meeting last week. It was just an introductory meeting and they're scheduling meetings once a month for the next couple of months to help share ideas on how communities and municipalities can help help with rental um, energy efficiency improvements. And Stephanie, you were there at that meeting as well. Um, I got there a little bit late, but it seemed like mostly an introduction and organization meeting. It was, yep, it was very general. So hopefully more to come on that as that gets going. Yeah, I'm really interested in hearing how that goes and what comes out of that. So thank you. Um, doo -doo -doo, draft solar bylaw, we already sort of talked about that. Is there anything more to add there, Steve? Or no? no, nothing more. Um, transportation, so that, that's, that doesn't need to be on the agenda twice. Um, Stephanie, why don't we, did we decide to take that off at the top of the agenda there? for now yeah well i think last meeting you had asked about sort of taking it out but you always want to leave these items in so it was just a you wanted it as a separate item for discussion which is why yeah. i pulled out before right right um, if we pull it out there though we probably should take it out of the advisory and support one or the other it doesn't really matter to me okay. it's important enough that maybe it should be its own thing um well, you tell me where you want to keep it, and we, we don't have to decide that right now. We can we'll decide later. Sure. Decide later. Um, so transportation, Tony, anything new there? Nothing local. Oh, not completely local. One thing is that the, I think it's the all of mass dot does like a name a snow snow plow competition. <laughs> it is active, so that's kind of fun. I thought that was cute. Um, and also on the MassDOT website, the pub, there's a public participation plan that is open for public comments. I believe in this plan, they also kind of address the, the transition to cleaner energy sources. Um, so if you guys have time and comments after reading through that, that'd also be a good, and I think that's all I had. You yeah. wanna send that link along too? That sounds like there's a link. Yes, there is. I can send that in the chat. Question no, you can't. You just send it to Stephanie and she'll distribute it. Sounds good. 
I'll send the link for both, by the way, the contest and the. Great. Great. Uh, okay. Transportation. Okay. Regional, anything. Okay. Regional state policy update. So I have a few things there. Um, mostly I wanted to mention that climate bill. Um, if I can get this thing to open. There we go. This summary on Will Brownsberger's state senator's website. Um, I'll just talk about some of the things that it touches on. Expediting siting and permitting, uh, protecting residents from high costs uh, by pairing rates for low and middle income consumers. Um, building out electric vehicle infrastructure is addressed. Um, <laughs> something that I find a little puzzling, but fusion energy and battery storage, they wanna make sure that Massachusetts is the very first na place in the state nation that uses fusion energy when it becomes available. Don't hold your breath. This will not be how we solve the energy problem, the energy transition problem. Uh, offshore wind to support the growing offshore wind industry. Um, advanced metering infrastructure. This is exciting as demand on a local grid increases with the adoption of electric vehicles and heat pumps. Advanced metering infrastructure includes smart meters, communication networks and data management systems. That would be great, especially if it goes along with rates that change with demand. That would be very cool. Um, solar energy, Bill establishes new policies to facilitate the deployment of solar energy through updates to historic district laws, providing policy recommendations, through a solar canopy working group and requiring DPU to explore expanding access to net crediting. That should be interesting. Also expands affordability and access for low income customers in the Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target Smart Program and authorizes the transfer of smart solar credits to customers in any electric utility territory. Decarbonizing buildings is addressed, um, supporting lean technology and innovation, leading by example. <laughs> So those are the things he mentions. There are some things that I know he left out. Um, in particular, just find this. Uh, oh, there's a three page executive summary as well. Maybe I should send that too. But um, where's the thing that was left out? Oh, well, I can't find it right now. Somebody commented on this. Oh, there, there it is. Summary, this is an important piece of the bill addressing embodied carbon. It establishes an embodied carbon intergovernmental coordinating council that must develop an embodied carbon reduction plan by the 31st of July next year. Has to address embodied carbon in state buildings and transportation projects, et cetera. I won't read all of these, but I thought that was another interesting thing. And I seem to recall there was also something in it somewhere about uh, protecting workers in the gas industry by expanding on that Framingham pilot. I think it was Framingham where they were converting uh, gas lines into heat lines, right? Doing uh, network geothermal heating, um, which would be cool. So there's, there was something about that in there too, I think. Uh, anyway, anyway, that's the that's what I wanted to mention there. There are some other larger scale things that I just want to let people know about. Of course, all of the various cops are happening in the last few weeks. Um, and uh, mostly as usual, the news is bad, but the biodiversity meeting that happened, I think in Colombia, um, saw an interesting promise for the first time ever by leaders from the World Bank and the IMF and various large foundations to stop investing in subsidizing fossil fuels and to redirect those funds to environmental conservation efforts. So that's huge and it didn't make any of the standard press. I only know about it because my partner Glenn is an is a editor for Among the Bay. Um, and they were jumping up and down about that. There was a lot of excitement about that. Of course, to counter that, 
there had been a lot of excitement about the plastics treaty that it almost looked like we were going to sign and that yesterday uh, Biden pulled out of. So apparently that was a stunt in an effort to try to get to help uh, Harris get elected and they just pulled out of it. So that was extremely disappointing um, yesterday. There was finally going to be a plastics treaty and now there isn't. So on the larger. <laughs> Uh, and then finally, there was an announcement that I thought people should know about uh, from Eversource. I don't know if this is Berkshire Gas and everyone. I don't quite know how this works, but the price of gas from Eversource is increasing 27% this winter, which I think is a pretty big hike. Um, and that's sort of been expected now for a while that these prices would start going up. Um, so maybe that's the beginning of, of increases in the uh, natural gas, methane, nat natural gas. Lori, that was the price of gas for consumers or? For heating. For heating, okay. For heating. If you heat with gas, your heating bill is going to go up 27% this winter. So. Did they list specific reasons or did they just say 27%? Uh, uh, let's see. That I'm came curious. From, I think that's, you know, they have to go through a process where they yeah. request an increase. And so it's got to be related to. They got to be. They got to get it proved, like or proved. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I think if it's if it's ever source, it's probably all of them. But I I tried to figure that out just before the meeting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know this has been expected for a while. This is related to the <laughs> to something we mentioned last time, which is you know as we all go off of gas and convert to um, to uh, heat pumps. Um, especially if a lot of people are converting to hybrid systems, which they are, the peak demand for gas in the middle of winter and the coldest days doesn't change much because people are still using gas on the coldest days. But the rest of the year, they're hardly using it at all, if at all. So the infrastructure still has to be there, but the amount of gas being sold goes way down. So the price has to go up. So it doesn't surprise me, but um, hmm. it does make getting heat pumps, you know, cold weather, cold, yeah, what is it called? Um, you know, cold weather heat pumps uh, uh, gives an advantage to that. People are going to want to convert if electricity ends up being cheaper than, right now the problem is that, that, you know, heating with methane is cheaper than heating with a heat pump in our region. But that's not going to be the case for long. Um, all right, so those are my regional things that have been going past my desk in the last bunch of days. Anyone have anything else to add? Staff updates, Stephanie, I think we're, that brings us to staff updates. Yep. Uh, it's been very, 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 very busy. Um, so I can't remember the last time I spoke to you at the last meeting if we had already submitted our EECBG grant funding request, which was for the purchase of the electric truck for the facilities department. So that's been submitted. I haven't heard anything back from that yet. Uh, went from that to then having to submit the Green Communities Annual Report. Um, there was a bunch of data that was um, Missing from a couple of years, we had some staff changes, and so some of the data hadn't been compiled um, so that when I entered data, I was missing some. So I I actually was able to get that data, so I updated um, that information into Mass Energy Insight. Um, so this last year in FY24, I think last time I had reported out to you last year, it looked like we had met our 20% reduction goal. So unfortunately, with the updates, we didn't. However, um, we've progressively gone down each year with all of those updates. Uh, we've pro progressively been um, decreasing our energy usage. And so we're down 15% below baseline, which is actually really good. Um, and that's, as far as I know, that's like with a complete data set. So that was really good news, actually. Um, so I was happy to, to do that. Um, the next thing I'm working on currently. Before, before you go on related yep. to that, um, something I forgot to mention, 
So faculty, some faculty lately have been worried that UMass seems to have been ignoring its climate goals that were put together under the previous administration. Mm -hmm. And apparently, according to one of my students who is involved in student government, uh, that was pretty much made official <laughs> last week when one of the, um, she couldn't, she didn't remember who it was, but it was, it was um, somebody in the, in the administration at UMass said that they are not going to try. They had a goal to get to carbon neutrality by 2032, I think, and they are not going to make that. They're just not even gonna try. So, um, yeah. <laughs> There's well, that. luckily our goal is 2050. <laughs> yes, so by 2050 we can- So we still it. have some time. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, you know, honestly, as we all know, this is not, easy. This is, you yeah. know, this is a hard thing to do. Um, and for a lot of reasons. So, you know, I try to just maintain a positive outlook and <laughs> just keep plugging forward as best I can with that's what we're trying to do, do and do. celebrate the successes that we can when we have them. And I think we've had them. I think we are, for me, doing this work over the time frame that I've been doing it, we are so much further along than we were you know, back in 2000. So I, I am very thankful to all of you and all the work that you do. And I'm very thankful to sort of the shift in the mindset and the focus on this, these efforts. So I think we're in a good place. I mean, globally, you know, we are where we are globally, but at least in Amherst, I think we can feel good about what we're doing. Yes. So, no, I think you know, there's that. So I that so getting back to the green communities report, you know, again, we're 15 percent below our baseline of 2011 um, energy usage. And that's good. That's actually good. I know it's been a long time, but that's still good. Some communities actually increase their energy usage. So the fact that we're 15 percent below is pretty significant. That's great. really great. great. Um, uh, um, so part of the green communities report, too, I feel like we're seeing a lot more transition to either hybrid or all electric vehicles. The police department just got four hybrid cruisers, which is really exciting. And they they are intending to eventually uh, convert to all electric. You know, they've talked to me about installing um, EV charging. And so I worked with the facilities manager and I am going to, with sustainability funding, um, order two single port EV chargers to go behind the police department. So it's, you know, again, we're, we're moving in a direction. So, I mean, to me, that's super exciting. So I'm really happy about that. Um, another thing that I very last minute wasn't planning on doing, but got um, encouraged to do was to apply for the Mass Save Community Partnership Energy Advocate mm -hmm. funding initiative. Yeah. And so I did pull it together, managed to pull it together. I haven't heard from them, but um, the hope is that we will get an energy advocate or we'll get, so we'll get funding for an energy advocate. What we outlined, we could get someone full-time, but what we outlined, because I think it's more realistic as someone to be 24 hours per week. Um, and it, it's a three-year funding period. So this is a position with benefits. So mm -hmm. I'm really hopeful that we can, you know, find someone, well, I'm hopeful that we get the funding to create the position. And then when we do, if we do, um, that we can then find someone, you know, I think it's a really great opportunity. Part of what I wrote, and this is what I wanted to elaborate more on when I was talking about the heat pump program earlier, is that because this is a mass safe program, and this energy advocate would be the one sort of doing more direct outreach to community members, it's a really nice partnership and collaboration and fit with the heat pump program. So what I proposed in that proposal uh, was to get community volunteers to work with the energy advocate. So the energy advocate could oversee the volunteer group. But again, you know, this is about the mass safe program. So it's not just about heat pumps, but they're so interrelated. Yep, they can really work, you know, off of each other. So I think we have a good shot because we do have this program and because, I mean, they really, I felt like they were really pursuing Amherst to submit an application. So I think they will yeah. consider it favorably. So I'm really hopeful because I think that'll really be a great initiative working together. So again, I built in volunteers, already had um, 
a retired U, uh, Amherst High School environmental science instructor who said he was interested in helping out. I told him about the ECAC, but I think he wanted to do something a little more direct. So I mentioned this energy advocate opportunity and he would be interested in assisting and helping out an energy advocate. So he might be like the first volunteer who's a very qualified and capable individual to sort of be part of that initiative. So I'm just hoping this will kind of gather some momentum and we can get some really solid people to sort of participate in that. So that's moving forward. Um, the other yeah. thing, do you have questions, Lori? Yeah, so just a comment, that is the model that a lot of other other communities that have heat pump right. coach pro uh, programs use, right? Yeah. They have yeah. somebody working with the town and who oversees it. So, so go ahead, sorry. I'm, I'm excited about that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So I would be, you know, I would basically be supervising that effort. I'd be the direct, you yeah. know, supervisor. So, you know, they'd be working with me and, you know, and um, I'd still be maintaining my collaboration with CET, but I'd be able to liaison the two efforts. So, yeah, it's really exciting. I'm I'm really um, hopeful about that. Um, other things, I, there's just so much going on. Um it's like going from one report or application period to another. This one right now is for the community community uh, climate leader community program through Mass DOER, which is sort of like Green Communities 2.0. Um, so we have a lot of the requirements to apply for that designation under our belt. The two things that we don't have are the adoption of a zero emission vehicle first policy and a decarbonization plan. So as I told you months ago, we did receive technical assistance to develop the decarbonization plan. I only received it last week. I apologize because I honestly don't know that I'm gonna be able to get it before all of you. And I think you're gonna to have to trust me um, because I have to get it before the town council. The application is due December 31st. I only just got the, you know, this draft last week and they're gonna make updates to it again. So I'm still trying to juggle and, you know, fly with one wing, I feel like. So um, working on that decarbonization plan, it also has to go before the school committee, which that kind of, um, I knew about the fleet vehicle policy, but I wasn't aware the decarbonization plan has to go before the school committee too. So yeah. I've managed at least to reach out to the school committee chair, Sarah Marshall. Um, I think she said the meeting date was, I think it's December 17th or 19th. I'm sorry, I can't remember which, um, but I'm going to have to appear before them. And I would really love some of you to um, be able to come and support that presentation and, and that initiative. And I'll, I'll give you more information as I, as we go forward. Um, but again, I'm, so I'm, I'm working on that. I think I'll be able to get it. I'm hoping to get it done sooner than later, certainly by early next week at the absolute latest, because that decarbonization plan has to go into both the school committee packet and the town council's packet. Town council is going to be considering it at their December 2nd meeting but they do have another meeting in December so that if it gets referred or it has to go, um, you know, it, it doesn't get voted on at the first meeting in December, potentially it could get voted on at the next meeting in December. So two documents, the zero emission vehicle fleet, uh, uh, vehicle first policy and the decarbonization plan for both the town council and the school committee. So um, I did work on the zero emission vehicle first Policy, we already have a green fleet policy that was required to adopt. We were required to adopt that to become a green community initially. Um, and so I basically just took that existing policy and updated it. I don't know. I mean, it's a new name change and it's got significantly different guidelines, but ultimately I think it's still the same idea. So I'm not sure if they'll consider it an updated policy, revised policy, or if it's going to have to be like a whole new policy. So I've just kind of put it out there and I don't know how it's going to be taken. I think revising it is going to be easier than adopting a whole new policy. So we'll see. Um, I don't have any more information about that at this point. So uh, those are all the things going on. Um, 
Yeah, I feel like I'm, I honestly, I feel like I'm flying by the seat of my pants right now. If we so, can be of any help, let us, right? If there's anything you need help with. If I, I appreciate that. It's just like, at this point, it's just like, I just have to get it done. And I don't know that there's anything that I could like give you to do. It's really, I just have to okay. do it, you know? So, um, so I mean, if I had a staff person, <laughs> you know, that would be helpful that I could just give you know, this thing and say, here, run with this. Um, so anyway, I just, it'll get done. I'm, I know I'm going to get it done. I, you know, the, they already, both the school committee and the town manager have the vehicle policy. So at least that piece is done. And I know that's already, you know, probably going to start getting looked at. Um, right. The, the uh, decarbonization plan, you know, is <clears throat> going to take me a little bit longer, but I should get it done, like I said, the beginning of next week and get it out to, to both groups. And I will forward them um, both to you uh, as soon as I finish yeah. the, the plan. I don't want to do one at a time. I'm just going to get them both to you at the same time. That's fine. That's fine. That is really exciting, Stephanie. <laughs> and I think your plan is fine. And like I say, if there's anything we can do to help, um, you know, let us let us know. Otherwise, we'll stand back and Thanks. Well, thank you. And I, um, and, and thanks for your trust <laughs> that I'm doing you a solid. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So if that's it, is there anything else? Um, you know, we have updates, Stephanie, if not, we have items for the next agenda, which I think we've been doing as we've gone along here. Right. Um, and I think you can, you know, you can keep this as part of staff updates for next time. I don't think we need to add anything at this point. Anything else for the next agenda that we haven't touched on already? I don't think this is necessarily for the next agenda because I don't know the timing, but at some point we'll have some more information on what impacts the election will have on the Inflation Reduction Act funding um, uh, and what that means for some of the work we're doing. Um, it seems like, so we may want to think about what, we may just want to put that as a placeholder for some future point. Um, I'm dreading it's, that. It's likely that there will be some, I mean, I th the the pulse that we're getting is that it's not going to be a full repeal, but there may be some surgical yeah. cuts. Um, although on, on the other hand, I've, I've heard from folks that because there is a trifecta, like the pay for requirement may be less needed. And so maybe they won't do as much cuts as we thought they would. Um, meaning that they could still do their tax cuts they want to do without finding ways to save money elsewhere. Um, but but money that's already in hand at the state level is is going to be hard for them to scrape back. So and even at the agency level within the government. And so there may be a push to get that money out as fast as possible. So we should just keep an eye on that um, to the extent that it may be useful as we think about different projects in town, things of that nature. Um, there is a question about whether the direct pay will stay. And that's the thing that gives non-tax paying entities the direct tax credits versus having to go through a third party. I can imagine that there's enough non-tax paying entities that are also on the conservative side that may still want that as well, that maybe that could stay. Um, but time will tell. So anyway, I'll keep a pulse on what I hear from work stuff and maybe we could get somebody to come in and speak to us about on the Massachusetts side what they're thinking is going to happen um, at some point. Thanks, Laura. Stephanie? Yeah, just to um, what you were saying, Laura, my understanding is that a lot of the funding has gone to actually Republican states. Um, so which is why there's kind of a, you know, um, a desire to maybe not cut as much of this as we may fear. So I know that that's um, something that I've heard. 
Um, <clears throat> and then there was something else. Oh, the other thing I was going to ask you, Laura, is if your agency um, is doing anything about preserving some data because the oh, last mm. time in 2016, uh, there was federal climate data that disappeared, like whole databases were no longer accessible mm. to folks. And so I'm just wondering if you were... I, or you or it, other groups that your organization may know are are doing what they can to preserve some of that information? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, Ceres doesn't have that data, but um, I am actually talking to someone from the EPA tomorrow, so I could ask. I'm assuming they'll do the same thing they did last time. Um, but um, yeah, that's a good question. And yeah, a lot of the IRA funding has gone to red states and has gone to support manufacturing and job growth. Um, so if that is the goal of this administration, it would be a little bit silly to cut that those sources of funding. Um, so we'll see. Um, but that's certainly the message we're trying to get across and we're trying to advocate with staffers, you know, Republican staffers, um, and get business, importantly, get business voices in those communities and those states to speak to their politicians and say that they want to continue. You know, they've been making plans, a steel plant's making a plan to update because they're supposed to be getting millions of dollars and they don't, it's not in the business's best interest for them, for us to be flip-flopping on that stuff. So I'm cautiously optimistic that some things will remain. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so with that, and without any public comment, I think we can adjourn. Any other, I think, is there a move to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Oh, wait. Thank you, Steve. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, Don. Without any, without any, what's the, what's the right word? Further ado. Further ado. Uh, voting. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, see you all in two weeks. All right. Have a nice holiday, everybody. Yeah, have a good holiday. Have a good break. Yep. Yep, have a good break. Bye.